I got an arc like what? Hello guys, today we are here to talk about my review of The Last Smile in Sunder City by Luke Arnold. First of all, I'd like to thank Orbit and Ned Galli for the arc of this book. The Last Smile in Sunder City is Luke Arnold's debut novel and it's like a mystery set in a post-apocalyptic world that just lost its magic. Think good guys fighting this one evil dude who wants to erase all magic but the evil, evil dude won. We are following our main character Fetch Williams while he tries to uncover the disappearance of a vampire. Okay, so let's start by talking about the world building because I think that's the best part of this book. Most of this book is set in Sunder City, which is a city that, just like the rest of the world, recently lost its, ma its magic in an event called Coda. We don't really know what brought Coda on, we just know that it happened, and because of it, magic disappeared from the world. Sunder City is kind of like this steampunky, gothic town city, I guess, because it used to be really focused on technology, but when magic disappeared, magic used to fuel technology, so Sunder City was kind of thrown into poverty. And that is a really good part of this book. I think a lot of books focusing on magical worlds don't tell us how dependent on magic these worlds are. And everything in Sunder City used to be dependent on magic, the technology, the culture, and we get to see how everyone, humans and non-human species, deal with that loss. There's a bunch of magical entities in this world, and throughout the book we learn how each one lost their magic, how it affected them. So we learn how sirens lost their magic, how vampires lost them, how gnomes, just everything you can think of. And we also get really cool mythology around the creation of these magical species and how they came to be throughout the book. It was also really interesting to see how humans dealt with this loss of magic because they didn't have any, they were kind of the inferior species, but humans were always aware that they were going to die and a lot of these magical species lost their infinite lifetime, they lost their immortality, that's the word. <laughs> and so while humans were used to knowing they'll die, these creatures weren't, so it kind of leaves a really interesting power balance between the two kinds of things. <laughs> From the beginning of the book, we can see that Fetch, who is our main character, feels like he has a lot of guilt when it comes to the coda, when it comes to the events that, that, that led to the loss of magic. And throughout the book, we get a lot of flashbacks telling us why he feels this guilt and telling us a lot more about the coda. It's really interesting. Sometimes I think flashbacks can have a really like punched in way. It just feels like here's a flashback for no reason at all. But in The Last Mile in Sunder City, I thought flashbacks worked really well because they were paralleled with the tattoos that Fetch has on his arm. So for some flashbacks, not all, we kind of got the story of how he got each tattoo and that told us a lot more about his story and his life and how he's involved in the coda. Fetch is kind of like a grand air character, if you really miss that. I mentioned this in my Goodreads review, but he's very cynical, like to a fault. There's this one, it's in the beginning of this book and there's this one passage where he makes a comparison between a school and a prison and I was just like son relax he's very cynical he's very tough in a way that he thinks he's tough but maybe there's some things that he's not very tough about he was a very interesting character to read from he's not supposed to be likable but he was really interesting and I thought he was done very well the secondary characters however are a bit mm, I was a bit iffy on. I thought that should have been developed a lot more. Not counting this one guy. I don't remember which magical species he was from, but he opened kind of like this restaurant and he was just really focused on making really good food and he kept failing because he's from a different species and not human. And he was just precious and I loved him and I forgot his name, but I loved him. He was so cute, so precious. And coming from the secondary characters being a little... The representation of women was also... It got better as the book went on, but at first the female characters felt that they were just there to be females, you know? You know, it's kind of like that fantasy written by a cis male author vibes. But to be honest, when I first started the book, I thought it'd be worse. 
So, however, the representation of sex workers, not cool. Worst part of this book, and it, they came up like three or four times in a 300-ish page book, but mm, mm, didn't really sit right with me. And I've been talking about the world building for so long, because the mystery of the disappeared vampire really takes the background to the world building and learning about Dakota and learning about the magical species. The disappearance feels kind of like an excuse to talk about the world, which I don't really mind, but if you are going into this book thinking murder mystery or mystery, I don't really understand those titles because I don't read a lot of mysteries. But if that's your focus on reading this book, you might be a little disappointed. So if you go into this book thinking this is a mystery, but not really. It's more of an exploration of loss and grief and learning to deal with consequences and learning to deal with your part in something that wasn't really good. I think you're actually going to enjoy it. And it's a standalone fantasy. We need more standalone fantasies always. So that was my review of The Last Smile in Sunder City. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you want to pick this book up and I'll see you next time. Bye!